Hype man, I'm ready. What do you see in the Cowboys now that um, you may not have seen in the first week or during the season? It seems as if Dak in particular is turning the ball over a lot. What do you see when you watch that? Well, they're, they're running the ball good. You see Pollard starting to, you know, come into his own. Uh, 88 is starting to rip the league up. You got to know where he's at. Uh, a couple of rough weeks from uh, Dak, but, you know, he's coming off an injury. But uh, they got weapons. They got weapons. The line is getting healthy, so it's going to be a big test for us. Much is being made about the record on grass, one and four this year, but dating back to 2017, they've got a losing record. you <coughs> buy into any of that? Do you see a difference with this team on grass versus turf? This first time I'm hearing that, so uh, it makes me feel a little better. But... <laughs> You know, I'm quite sure the guys are not thinking about that. Um, if it helps us, I'm all for it. But, you know, the, the weapons and the challenges that we got to uh, face, you know, big challenge for us. Byron was just telling us, you know, that until you go through it, um, you can't really fully appreciate just how different postseason football is versus the regular season. And just like him, you went through it as a player. Um, what differences do you notice as a coach and also from when you played of, of the postseason? It's special. You hear this league, um, how different it is from colleges to speed. When you get in the playoffs, you know, it gets even faster. Um, first downs feel like points. And, uh, you know, everybody's standing up, and, uh, you know, all our dreams are right there, and you only get 60 minutes. But it's a special time. And um, I'm happy for the young guys that get to experience it. But it's uh, you can't explain it. You just got to go through it and understand uh, how special it is. We also were just talking to Byron about all the injuries and stuff this year, and I went through and counted the, the combined um, games missed by guys, especially in your secondary. And I know that that does so much for what they're able to accomplish up front, especially when you don't have Shaq Barrett. Can you just speak to just the challenges you guys have had to deal with when you were missing so many really good players on your back end? Well, it starts, you know, up top in the organization. When you get those rings, you know, everybody played a role in it. You got to have depth. You got to find free agents. You got to get guys in college late rounds because you're going to need everybody. And uh, until you go through it, you understand it just ain't coach talk. We need everybody in the building. They're going to play a role at some time in the season. And the, the more depth, chances of winning goes up. How much does it benefit then having two linebackers with Levante and Devin, just the consistency, playing every single game, every single snap, doing what they need to do? And they've been out there the whole time to Jenna's point where there's been so many other people that have been in and out of the lineup. Well, when they're healthy, that makes my job easy, I'll tell you that. But uh, you got to be ready. You, you know, it's one play, backups, you know, as coaches in this league, you got to make sure the last guy on the roster, he knows what to do. And um, we call you, we keep you on this team, we expect you to make plays, but you got to keep them guys, uh, their attention, you got to keep teaching, uh, even the practice squad guys, you never know who's going to play for you on Sunday. Larry, so people, a lot of people probably watched, a lot of Bucks fans probably watched Dallas's game Sunday, <clears throat> probably were encouraged. What did you make? <laughs> I don't buy none of that. <laughs> it's a whole other season. I don't know, our, from my eyes, we went 17-0. Everybody's seventeen and oh, I don't, <laughs> I don't buy that. And uh, you know, you hear, you know, from your family and friends, you hear that, and you know, people on all the the talk shows blasting them. I don't pay no mind to that. Those guys are a good team. They're twelve and five, and uh, we, we know what type of game it's going to be Monday night. Larry, of the guys that were held out on defense on Sunday, Bea, Carlton, Edwards, and Nassib, are all those in play to be back potentially? Um, you know, a lot of times you still in that mode, you know, let the week speak for us. And uh, we'll see by Monday who's up and who's down. Levante is like 32, right? He's played a lot of time this year in his career. You played an awful long time. What's the challenge? I know last year you had to lose Frank as you missed the last few games and battled through it. But what's the challenge as you get older? And how has he handled that to not let, you know, the level of players slip? Uh, one thing I can speak for myself as a player, when you start getting to the end, you know what I'm saying, that kind of motivates you a little bit, rejuvenates you because uh, you know the end is near. Uh, Levante, he's a pro. I mean, he still look good. I really judge my looks on, on the practice field. He's, he's still, you know, breaking, getting out his cuts. Uh, I call him the screen uh, sniffer. Every time they run a screen, he finds a way to make the play. But uh, he's playing at a high level. Those type of guys, if you're playing that well in your 30s, you know, God truly blessed you. You guys have a very-
military veteran group that have been through the battles in the playoffs. Have you seen guys during your career uh, when playoffs hit, young guys not be able to handle the pressure? Well, definitely rookies. You know, they didn't hit the rookie raw probably back in November. But uh, if you got a lot of uh, older guys, the main thing is just follow their lead. You know, uh, we, we set the tone. The, the veterans on this team, they set the tone. And uh, if you're smart, you're going to pay attention and follow them. Anything else? Thank you, guys. See you.